Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For by his great mercy we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Amen. Amen. So I don't know about you, but it's hard for me to believe that it's only March 31st and we're celebrating Easter already. It's equally hard to believe that though Election Day is over seven months away, election season has already begun in earnest. Now I will get to joy in a moment. <laughs> Daily email sol solicitations are already piling up. Stump speeches are on the rise, and political ads filled with vitriol are already crossing the airways. And through it all, we will be hearing different takes on the American dream, what it is and what it can be, and its current state today. We'll be reminded of home ownership and picket fences, strong borders, and the preservation of freedom throughout the world, and accessible health care and secure retirements, excellent education and personal responsibility, and countless other promises of the all-encompassing American dream. Which got me to thinking, if we as a people have a dream for our society, what is God's dream for us and for our society? Of course, today is God's response to that simple question. This day of joy and gladness is God's dream and God's promise for all of the world. At its heart, the resurrection of Jesus proclaims that God's dream and purpose is life. And not simply biological life. Bios in the ancient Greek. God wants more than our simple breathing and eating of human existence. Rather, in the Greek, when we talk about life in the, in, in the New Testament, we talk about zoe life, the abundant and full life, a joyful life that is truly complete. Over the course of his life, Jesus speaks directly to this dream of God, reminding his disciples and those who came to learn from him that God's dream was that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Again, that his joy may be in us and that our joy may be complete. This is Zoe life. Full, joyful, complete. It is a dream of God that I firmly believe speaks to the human heart that we all share. Today is not the day for interactive questions, but several weeks ago I asked our community, what is it that your heart yearns for? No one said a white picket fence or an extra bedroom in their home or a new 85-inch OLED TV. No one spoke of a single thing that they could consume or purchase. To a one, people spoke about their yearning for peace and quiet contentment, for more time with family and friends, a yearning for the Zoe life, full and joyful of God's dream. And like that off-sighted American dream, God's dream is multifaceted, touching on the individual, communal, and societal, and even universal life that we share. On that individual level, God's dream and purpose of Zoe life begins in the simple proclamation, the simple proclamation of our, of your, hear it for you, 
your belovedness. St. Francis de Saul, an 16th century Roman Catholic, invited a student of his to consider the eternal love of God for her. The love that began not at her birth or even at her conception, but rather a love that began when God began to be God, which was always. He reminded her that God had dreamt all of her goodness into, cre into creation. That God dreams all of your goodness into creation to celebrate and bless you. God's promise and God's dream begins with this simple and profound truth. And so it should be no surprise that the creator of heaven and earth who has loved you since before time will meet you with forgiveness whenever you transgress and will greet you with life eternal when your mortal life ebbs away. It is this same love that greets Mary Magdalene when she finds herself in the darkness of the grave with a call of belovedness, Mary. A call which rekindles joy and hope within her heart. The beginning of the Zoe life of God is in this simple and true fundamental truth that you, each and every one of you, each and every one of us, each and every one of us throughout all time and in all places are beloved of God. But God's dream and promise is not simply personal. It is profoundly relational as well. God so desires us to know and experience the truth of our fundamental belovedness that God gives us to one another. To become more than strangers and passers-by, by, but friends with one another. God gives to us the sacred mystery of his church, that community of grace and affection that we might know and experience a truth which our family, our birth family, can only half reveal that we are known and received with joy and that grace and reconciliation are the real economy of the world. Speaking as one who played baseball throughout high school and college, one who knew the joy of the, the team and the ball field, I can say with some experience that the relationship of grace and affection that God calls us to is not found there. When I consider all of the friendships that I made through, through the years, I am even more aware of all of the young men and the young boys who were left at the side of the field when their skill was no longer enough, they were simply dropped from the team. You see, so much of our life, so many of our relationships, from the baseball field of our childhood to the corporate centers of our adulthood, only receive us and celebrate us through our performance and what we give. God's community receives us for who we are, nothing more, and blesses us in our being. And so we are given to one another in a community that receives us not for our wealth or our productivity, not for our beauty or our wisdom, but simply for the gift that we bring to one another as friends in Christ. Finally, 
God's dream and purpose is not simply for a small handful of people on the shore of Lake St. Clair. Rather, God's dream and purpose is for all of humanity and all of creation, that we may know the fundamental peace of God's Zoe life, that life in all of its abundance may truly be a reality, not merely for the wealthiest among us, but the foundation of life for all that all may know abundance, that all may know fullness of joy and completeness of life. God dreams of that day when Christians and non-Christians, when Americans and non-Americans may come to know and experience the fullness and joy for which all hearts yearn. Life. This is God's promise and this is God's dream. But not just any life, not just the breathing and eating of human existence, but Zoe life, life that is abundantly full and made complete with joy. May your life be full and may your joy be complete. <laughs>